Podcasts. Hello, this is Greg Mertens, Director of Product Education for Inktavo, the parent company of Graphics Flow. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create color separations using the freeware program Inkscape. Now, unlike Adobe Illustrator or CorelDRAW, Inkscape doesn't have support for spot colors such as Pantone colors, and it doesn't have the ability to automatically output color separations. So when I'm creating color separations in Illustrator or CorelDRAW, if I designate colors in the vector artwork as spot, when I go to print, I can select separations and it'll print out solid black images for each color in the design and I can use those to output film positives. So in Inkscape, you can still accomplish the same thing, but you have to use a technique using old school manual color separation. And that's the technique I'm going to teach you in this video. I'm currently in my graphics flow account, so let's go ahead and edit up a vector graphic. I'm going to go to design ideas. I'm going to go down here to style and I'm going to look for a patch design. So we'll just select on patches. And then I'm just going to scroll down till I find a design that I connect with. I'm not concerned about the subject matter or even the colors or the clip art. I'm only concerned about the graphic. Do I connect with it visually? And so I'm going to go down here and we'll select this design right here. I'm just going to click on it. And then I'm going to click on customize to begin the editing process of the vector graphic. So all of the text variables and colors in the, of the graphic are now displayed over here. And let's go ahead and localize this. And I'm going to change Paradise Cove over here to soccer. Hit enter. I'm going to change the establishment date to 1966. I could change the fonts and the colors and all that here as well, but we're just doing basic changes. Cascades is going to say central. Pool service is going to say bulldogs. And then what I'm going to do is change out that clip art icon with bulldog. So I'm just going to go over here. There's the clip art icon. I'm going to select the little edit button. I'm going to say replace. I'm going to type in bulldog in the search. We'll search through all the graphics for the vector clip art. I'll click on this bulldog. I'll hit apply. But well, the next thing I want to do is maybe consolidate the colors a little bit. So I'm going to take the background color of the bulldog right here. I'm going to select it. I'm going to match it up with that blue in the design. And then I can see this white right here. We're going to click on that and I'm going to select this other white. So now we only have one white in the design. So we've consolidated the whites. That's really important when you're doing color separations. You really want to get your colors narrowed down. You can clearly see here three colors, white. We've got the aqua color and we've got the black. And I'm just going to recolor this to school color. So I'm going to go over here to the white and I'm going to change that to kind of a burgundy color. And we'll click on apply to apply that color change. And over here on aqua color, let's see, we'll click on that. And we're going to make that kind of a navy we're setting this up for dark. So where the black is, I'm going to swap that out with white. Would be a color combination that I'd output onto a dark substrate. I think this would look great on black. Once we have the design localized, I'm just going to save the design. We're going to save it into our graphics flow account. I already have a folder here for Bulldogs and I'll name it over here. We'll just call it Bulldogs 1. Click on save. And now to go to the editing part in Inkscape, what I need to do is save the PDF file. So we're going to download the vector graphic and we can edit that quite effectively using Inkscape. So I'm just going to go over here, click on PDF. I'm going to go into my Bulldogs folder, name it Bulldogs01, and then we'll just click on save. So now we've downloaded that PDF file and we can begin the editing process in Inkscape. I use the open function in Inkscape to open up the PDF file. I have access to all the vector artwork in that file. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my page options in Inkscape. This is a feature that was added to the more current releases so I can have multi-page documents. So I'm going to go over here to the dropdown. I'm going to select letter to match my film output size. I'm going to select the option for portrait. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom back out. So I'm just going to grab my zoom tool here. And we're going to zoom back out so I can see the entire page. And I'm going to center this up on my page. So I'm just going to select it and I'm going to get it centered to my page. It's very important at this stage that you resize the graphic to the correct output size. So I've got it all sized. I'm ready to start the color separation process. So next I'm going to zoom in on the graphic here. Just grab my zoom tool and I'm going to select it. And I want to see how it's grouped currently. So I can see this is a group. So I'm going to right click on that object and ungroup it. And I can see this clip art is a group, same thing, right click, ungroup it. And then I'm going to group the red by color. All I need to do is click on one instance of the red, go over here to the edit menu, select same and select by fill and stroke. Once I've done that, I can just hit control G on my keyboard to group that. And this is going to make it easy for me to color separate this. The next thing I'm going to do is import a template with separation marks. So I'm going to go to file, I'm going to select import. I have my separations template that I set up. 
This is a vector-based graphic. I'm going to click on OK, and it's created the separations template as a second page to my document. So I'm just going to move that over to page one. And so we have our registration marks here. And now we have a two-page document, but I need three more pages to create the color separation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. I'm going to select Create and Edit Document Pages. And I'm going to click on page number three right there, four, and another page, five. The next step would be creating a copy of the graphic with the separation marks on each page. And that's not an easy thing to do in Inkscape. You can't copy and just have it automatically centered. So what I've done is I've downloaded and installed an extension for Inkscape. I'll leave the link for that extension in the YouTube description, and that's going to automatically perform that task. So what I need to do is select everything in the graphic. I'm going to go to extensions. I'm going to click on pages and I'm going to click on the extension which is a page watermark extension, but it works perfectly for this. I'm going to select duplicate and I'm going to click on apply. I'm going to begin the process of manually color separating the graphic. I'm going to leave page one alone just as a reference. And I'm just going to zoom in here and I'm going to select this entire color layer right there. And I'm going to change that to this RGB black. I'm going to select the blue layer as well and holding down my shift, the other blue layer. I'm gonna click on white, and we've created a color separation for that color. Let's go on to the next one. And on the next one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this layer right here, and I'm gonna make that black, as well as the blue layer here, we're gonna make that black. And then the red layer, we're gonna recolor that to white. And then the last separation is just going to be this white area. And so I'm going to take this object right here, recolor it to black, this object and the blue in here, we're going to color that to white. Same thing right here. Just kind of zoom in so we can select that. Right there, that's going to be recolored to white. And now we have this file color separated. I set this design up for printing on a dark substrate, so I need to create a white underbase underneath the entire graphic or a selection of colors. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna set up my underbase. So first things first, what I wanna do is I wanna recolor everything in the design to black. So we're gonna recolor that to black. Now, if you weren't planning on underbasing under this color, you could just leave it at white. Um, I'm gonna go down here on the white layer and we're gonna make that black. And I'm gonna make sure that this blue layer here on the Bulldog is separated from this outer blue layer here, and we're gonna make that black because I'm only going to create a choke around the perimeter. And what a choke is, is a white stroke that's gonna shrink in that underbase just a tad bit. So I'm just gonna right click on white over here. I'm gonna say set stroke. So we've set a white stroke. You can see the design got slightly smaller. I'm going to go over here to fill in stroke, and this is where I can set my parameter. So I'm just going to do a one point stroke to make that underbase slightly smaller. If you wanted to trap a color and make one color slightly overlap another, you would select the color that you want to overlap, and then you'd go over here and add a black outline to it. I'm just going to right click, say set stroke. Again, I would go over to my stroke function, and I'm just going to put a half point trap in here, very small amount. And that's going to make that separation slightly larger. Since we have a solid white underbase in this graphic, we don't need to trap that. So I'm going to click on Control Z to remove that stroke. Here's our color separated file as a multi-page document. You can see we have solid black with color separation marks for each color in the design. And we also have solid black for an underbase. Next, I'm going to go to File. I'm going to select Save a Copy. I'm going to select the option for PDF. I'm going to click on save, then click on OK to create the PDF. You can print the PDF color separations in any PDF viewing software. In this case, I'm using Adobe Acrobat, so I'm just going to scroll through here and we're going to take a look at the color separations. The only trick to doing this is when you go to print, make sure that the page size you set up in the document matches your print setting. And then if you've kept the composite image on page one, you just want to make sure you don't print this page. This manual color separations technique will produce the same quality color separations as you'd get from Adobe Illustrator or CorelDRAW using their color separations feature.